Hey everybody, it's afternoon, it's time to winterize the Chaparral. And this is a boat with a four and a half liter Mercruiser stern drive in it. So I figured I'd uh, go ahead and tape and show you what it takes to uh, prepare one of these for storage for over the winter. So here goes. Well, first of all, when you're doing one of these fuel injected engines, uh, you need a special fuel mixture. Uh, my old uh, 98 uh, Merc Cruiser, which was carbureted, you could spray fogging oil in it, and um, all you needed to do was have stabilized fuel in the tank. So, um, Mercury in the service manual will tell you uh, to mix a six gallon can of gas, but frankly, in order to do this, you don't need more than about a quart. Um, for the amount of time that you need to run the engine. So what I have here is a gallon can. So to do this mix you need about 12 ounces to a gallon, 12 ounces of two-stroke, and um, dose of fuel stabilizer. Don't need much because it's a it's an ounce to ten gallons so about an eighth ounce or so is about all this thing needs. And just a touch. And it'll keep the gas from going bad in the injectors over the winter. There's one trick with this can that I have to be careful. I kind of wanted to do it with only a half a gallon of gas but there's a flame suppressor, a safety device in here, and uh, with that, I can't um, I can't get my hose all the way to the bottom of the can, so I don't want to run short. So I run the can a little more full, shake it up good, and mix it all. The safety screen in there is a good idea. It just um, for this particular project, um, would be nicer if it didn't have it, but that's okay. All right, so then I have my hose uh, that I couple together uh, over the summer, and then the hose goes down in the gas can, and I've got a cap and a washer. And one of these days, I need to find a better washer, a better seal arrangement. But you only you only use this system for you know about 20 minutes a year. So right now I just try to be careful to um, not to spill. We set this out on the out on the swim platform area. There we go. Thread this guy on. It holds the big flat washer down. I mean the hose is not captured. Uh, it can't come out because it's got a fitting on it, but uh, there is a possibility of leakage, so you just have to be a little extra careful. So then this goes inside, and we'll go do a connection. Okay, and then the next thing I do is I'm going to fire it up. Um, there's water connected, the garden hose is connected at the back, uh, so the engine has water. Uh, I'm going to light up light it up and make an idle for a minute make sure that it runs um, before I disconnect the fuel and connect in the other other line. So. But the fuel tank has a fitting right there, a fuel hose that goes up to the inlet and on this tank that's where the flare fitting is that I need to uh, need to connect. On this one, it takes a you know, three-quarter inch wrench, and then that will release that part of the hose. And then I will come in with the come in with my alternate here. And then what you want to do is not spill gas if you can help it. 
had a small spill down here, so before I get any further, I'm going to wipe that spill up. Don't want um, bad things happening here in the engine compartment. Get that oily rag out, gasoline rag out of here. And we'll just connect those two together. And snug them up. And then, then my other system here has a squeeze bulb, which I will pump this guy until until it gets uh, hard. Make sure I have fuel pumped in this hose. Kind of like doing an outboard. Feels pretty good. Okay. So then that goes up on goes up here out of the way. The hose goes up here out of the way. Now the fuel pump will suck. Uh, the fuel pump will suck fuel out of this hose and around and into the, into its normal inlet. So I'm going to turn on the vent fan for just a moment and then we're going to light it up. And the process is they want you to run it at about 1300 RPM for at least um, five minutes. And, and not more than 1300 RPM because you can overrun the garden hose and overheat the engine. And um, I learned that lesson the hard way uh, by uh, kind of ignoring that on my uh, 98, on my 305, and um, and I burned the exhaust shutters out one time while I was winterizing because I it was probably idling at 2,000 and it smoked them, so. time we can do our oil, do an oil change and uh, I'm going to leave this fuel hooked up for now because we will um, the process will be um, oil and filter first um, well actually I'm going to turn off the water for the moment and um, and begin draining the uh, lower unit oil and um, then I'll come back and do the oil change. When we finish the oil change and the and the uh, lower unit lube, uh, then we'll fire it up and do the antifreeze. The instructions on this one are a little different than the old boat. You still want the uh, you still want the out drive raised, but on the older boats, you take out the drain plug. And then you take out the vent up at the top of the stern drive. Um, what they're recommending in the book these days is what they're recommending these days is to um, leave that in. Now, first of all, I got to take the plug out on this side. We'll get it draining, and then. We'll take the cap off of the of the fill bottle inside. So then it's kind of breezy today, so let's put it, get, raise this pan up, get it up in the air here a little bit. Let it 
screen. All right, well that's draining. I'm going to change the oil. We both at one time. All right, so on this engine, we have the advantage that the um, oil filter is remote. It's up front here. So the first thing we're going to do is we'll pull the dipstick out. So we'll get this guy threaded on. Hose in the pan. So now we're going to suction her out. Looks like I got it to the bottom. Pretty close here. I'm going to keep going just a little more until, until I don't see any more come out of the hose. Okay. Since I got that got the uh, oil sucked down as far as I can. Let's take this guy off of here. Okay. Wipe that down. At this point, I had a camera uh, glitch and uh, didn't get it all recorded. So at this point, you would remove the oil filter and replace it. And I have another Wix filter that gets spun on. The, uh, you need a small pan underneath that oil filter adapter to catch uh, some of the overage that com comes, out, uh, comes out the side of the adapter there. Uh, and then when you're finished, uh, fill it back up. Uh, on my boat, it takes a full uh, five quarts of uh, of oil and this engine uh, being of the modern uh, versions that use catalysts wants the uh, synthetic blend oil rather than the straight mineral oil uh, for catalyst protection and as I said the mine takes uh, five quarts uh, exactly. I drained about half the bottle <clears throat> of the monitor bottle inside. This just drains very very slowly this way. Um, it used to be you could take that bottle and you can take that bottle and dump it out but now it's bolted in and they've made it tougher so now I need to lift this down a little bit I had to drop it a little bit normally you do this all the way up but um, you can't reach the vent plug uh, because of the way the position of the system here. So at this point I'm going to pull the vent. I didn't put that many hours on it this year. I'm just not going to worry uh, about the bottle being completely changed. Emptied the bottle about halfway. All the, all the sediments ought to be in the bottom of the bottle so they'll drain out. Now that I got the plug out, I'll put it back to the front. Well, that finishes draining. Um, I have a, I have my bottle here of, um, my bottle of antifreeze. I've been using 50-50, um, uh, 200. And let's just check that and see what it is. This, this is fresh, so it's 50-50 that's been diluted. So it comes in at minus 35 on the refractometer. Um, these guys Same mix, but it was came out of the um, engine exhaust. Uh, I collected what was what was coming back out. And 
and it comes in at minus 38. I capture as much as I can so that you don't waste or pollute. And uh, just for comparison, if you do one of these things with the floating ball, um, let's see what we get out of that. See, it says all the balls float. And they claim when all the balls float, you've got minus 50 freeze protection. So there's, I mean, there's always some debate about, in propylene glycols, um, there's, they, they use a freeze point and then they use a burst point. And um, I always kind of try to go to the freeze point as being safer. And I think, from what I can tell, that's what the refractometer actually does is it's um, it's the freeze point, not the burst point, but um, so be it. So anyhow, um, I've got to fill my bottle here. Uh, one of the problems I've found, or challenges I'll say, with this engine is getting all the water out. And so I'm going to use this kit that puts... Um, puts antifreeze through the earmuffs and right into the lower unit of the engine. We're going to run it until it sucks in most of it and then I'll shut it down. And then, uh, let me back up. First we'll drain all the water that we can. And then we'll feed this. Now, what happens is, all these bottles, I collect with pans underneath here, the exhaust and all of the stuff that comes out of the exhaust is just as good as what I put in. Um, but for some reason, at the end of the year, whatever's in the block ends up not being quite as good. So it's as if there's some water trapped in hoses somewhere that doesn't get circulated. Um, and so I haven't figured that out. I mean, I've, I've done this a couple of, a couple of years now. And this will be the third time. Um, the dealer, when the dealer um, did it, uh, when I when I um, got the boat back in spring, and uh, there was nothing in the block, they had drained the they had um, processed it. I think like I I'm doing, uh, and then they had drained it. So there was only residue in the engine. There wasn't um, I, there wasn't anything to collect more than about a cupful. So, kind of interesting. Um, so I'm still trying to figure this one out. Uh, the single point drain system on this engine has a lot of plumbing. Um, last year I took the trouble to go inside. There are quick connects on the sides of the block and I verified that the block actually did drain. And so the, the, there, was, there was no water in the block when I was done before I ran this process. So there must be you know, water trapped in hoses, uh, they caution you to drain it for 10 full minutes. So, again, I still need to do, um, put the lube back in. So, first thing is, I'm going to finish this up. As long as I'm at it. I know I didn't mix it a lot, but see what we get here. And yeah, we're sitting at about minus 38, so. And the boat's going to sit in the garage all winter, and the garage is normally above freezing. But there are times where, for one reason or another, I roll it out in the winter because I need to use the garage for something, and then it sits outside, and it will get minus 30 here. Uh, so, you just never know where the boat's going to sit over the course of the winter. So I always make sure, I always make sure that I have enough protection, both freeze protection and corrosion protection. One more thing on the top of again, topic of antifreeze. We talked about burst protection and freeze protection. So this is my Starbright minus 200. And basically 
it's burst protection at minus 200, freeze protection at minus 100, and they have a dilution chart that you can get for it. And, uh, and so I've been using it at 50-50. When you take this um, freeze protection of minus 100 and you do 50-50, you get about minus 35 or 40, which is pretty doggone good. And that's where it starts to gel. And then the burst protection is even further. So that's what I've been using now for several years. I like to buy the high concentration and just dilute it to what I want it to be. And, uh, and that works pretty darn well. So these engines have a single point drain, the Alphas. I, I think it is the Bravos that have a, uh, they have a pressurized drain, but this one's just gravity. So you take this back, and you can see the water's starting to drain. And there's a blue plug down there that if it didn't drain, you could use the blue plug. Then, over here, on top of the basically the, the uh, thermostat housing, there's another plug that you take off to make sure that the um, system doesn't have an airlock in it and that it actually drains. It, and you hear it go right there. Because that one's like on the back side of the thermostat. know what time it is. I'm gonna let that go ahead and drain. Mercury Merc Cruiser has moved the drain plug um, on my other engine it's on the opposite side and it's down further in the bullet so okay so we do that Fill this guy until we get fluid out the uh, out the vent hole on the other, vent hole on the other side. I wish they'd have left the hole on the opening on the same side because um, it's harder to watch the vent when you're filling from the opposite side. Normally, uh, when I do this, I, I'll go in and I'll warm the bottles up with hot water so that it flows easier. But today, I'm very fortunate to have a rare November day. The temperature's about 65 degrees outside. And these bottles have been in the house, so they, they were warm before they came out. So it's not like I'm trying to do this when it's in the 30s or 40s. Now that one's reached its limit, so let's switch bottles. It usually takes a little more than a quart, and that one wasn't quite full. I used some of that topping up the other, one of my other engines. So we're watching that port. Oop. There you go. That's full. So when you hit that point, you can put the, put the plug back in. If I had run the bottle all the way to the, the uh, monitor bottle all the way to the bottom, then they would want me, the book would want me to pump some more from the bottom put the plug in, uh, continue to fill from the bottom, and and refill into the bottle. But since um, I have about a quarter or half the bottle still there, um, I'm not going to do that today because I know it's, it's still feeding down. So we'll put this guy in here, cinch her down. And once the vent is in, you can pop this guy out. 
very quickly as it comes out. Put the uh, plug back in. Those down. So at this stage, um, I have the bucket connected. It's ready to go. The hose is connected to the earmuffs. I have several buckets to catch what comes out of the exhaust. Um, I did go back and pull the other blue plug out of the um, other drain plug. It got a little bit more water. So it's been sitting about 20 minutes. And I want to go close that all up. It's actually still dripping, so I'm going to give it just a couple more minutes. Now we turn this guy on. Make sure the vent is open. And it starts feeding. We'll light up my lighter. Well, that's how you get her done. At this point now, you wait for all the coolant to drain out into the buckets. And I lose a couple quarts, but it's amazing out of everything I put in that bucket. That's all I lose is a quart or two, and this is biodegradable uh, polyethylene glycol, or uh, uh, propylene glycol, get the right words here. Um, but all these places have to drain out, and then uh, the service manual will tell you of course, if some of the, you could tell, but uh, they want you to come in and run a wire in and check and make sure that the speedometer um, pickup, which is at the front there, that that's open. They want this one to be open and it's draining like mad. So there are just several um, places on here where there are ports that need to drain. Um, we can go back around and put the covers back. Um, disconnect the fuel line off this little tank and put the fuel line back the way it belongs and I need to top up the uh, lower unit uh, drive monitor and then under this cushion on this boat there's a actually a live well and uh, I need to get I have a uh, piece of uh, hose that I can put in there and feed with a funnel to uh, put some antifreeze in the hoses in the loop. Uh, that live well uh, pulls through a fitting on the bottom of the boat and circulates and sends, sends it out the side. So that just needs to be winterized also. But now I can tuck her back away for the winter and we'll be all set. Um, one other thing on this bottle, um, I've got it standing up now, but when you, um, when you use one of these, you have to watch out because um, even though there's still looks like there's plenty in the bottle when the level gets down to the point here where the where it isn't feeding the pipe anymore um, you either have to um, support the back of the bottle and tip it you know tip it forward or that's when I see the when I see the level get down to there where it's not going to be feeding the hose anymore uh, that's when I go shut the engine down that's all that's all there is. I'll do that. I'll do the cleanup stuff 
and should be ready. I've got uh, the, the fuel's all stabilized, um, and it's got wreck gas in it, and uh, so we're all good. Um, all set to uh, be tucked back in the garage till uh, spring. Hey, just to follow up on a couple of things now that I've got uh, the boat back in the garage. Um, two things. Um, one is, um, I did check with the refractometer, I did check the freeze point uh, of the, uh, what came out of the drains. And the drained fluid was between minus 30 and minus 38, depending on which port it came out of. Um, Second thing is, I've elected to leave the coolant in the engine till spring. I did drain a small amount off the bottom, you know, about a half a cup, and uh, measured it, and it measures at minus 32, minus 31. And again, that freeze point is what the refractometer measures, uh, which is the point at which it starts to, to develop ice crystals and, and start to get slushy. But if you're not pumping it, uh, you can go another, you know, 30 degrees, 50 degrees lower the, to the burst point, which is where it actually goes and gets solid. So the freeze point is very conservative. Uh, so anyway, um, at the moment it says minus 31, minus 32. Um, uh, last item, um, I've been measuring, I saw online uh, some debate on these engines about how much uh, coolant uh, the block holds in these 4.5 liters because this is Mercury's own engine and it doesn't it, it has a lot smaller water jacket than the old 4.3's or 5 liters do and I've measured it several times but if you drain the water into the bilge and tip the boat up the nose up and collect it all uh, you get about a gallon and three quarters uh, maybe a little more but but less than two and uh, like I say, it is very close to a gallon and three quarters of drainage uh, when you drain the block. And, uh, and I get the same thing when I, uh, when I drain it in spring. So, uh, usually. So, that's all for now. She's all tucked away for winter. And uh, I can go back to working on the Camaro.